doesn't that look like the picture? Okay, so subphylum cephalocordata, they are name-like for their blade or lance-like shape. Uh, they are very small, five to six centimeters in length, and they resemble the ide ideal chordate. Flip back to the last slide if you need to see it. They are very poor swimmers. Um, I read somewhere that their swimming is described as active sinking. Um, they uh, have these muscle segments, like we saw in the last slide, called chevrons, and they end up being uh, sort of a, uh, a V shape. And I know that they're found in Tampa Bay. Well, other than that, I don't know a whole lot about them, but again, we're at that very first subphylum, subphylum cephalochordata. So now we're going to move on to the urochordates. Eh, with a short stop off, take another look at another lancelet. And another lancelet. Again, they retain all of those ideal characteristics the pharyngeal slits, the notochord, the dorsal hollow nerve cord, and the postanal tail. And this is a good look right here. If you look at the bottom here with that tail, you can see how that might become uh, the uh, swimming apparatus for uh, higher chordates. So here it is. Here's the urochordata. This is our second subphylum. They are sessile. Side. Water in, water out. So you can see here in slide A, um, this is their larval stage, again, it's a short-lived stage, and you see all of those or idealized uh, chordate characteristics. When it matures into an adult, So everything that we're going to see from here on out for the rest of this uh, animal lecture is in subphylum craniata. Again, they used to be the vertebrates. Uh, they all will have a vertebrata um, to them. So uh, the three characteristics that, sh that separates them from the other subphylum that we looked at is the inclusion of that vertebrae. Uh, they tend to have an elaborate skull, and then the aquatics have fins and rays. We're going to start off the craniata, again that's this line of evolution, with two organisms. With the Mixini, we're going to look here at the hagfish, and the Petromyzontida, we're going to look at the lamprey. So sort of picture these as sister tacks of the Mixini and the Petromyzontida. We will compare and contrast the two. First, the Mixini, uh, the hagfish, they're scavengers. They feed on dead or dying fish or worms. Uh, they've got a slime gland response to both stress and predation. Um, they are actually looking at the production of the slime as uh, possible medicinal uses. Um, they are jawless. Uh, we will not get to jaw fish for another uh, couple of leaps. And they do share a joint ancestor with all of the vertebrates. So they represent the base um, of the craniata. And then the only craniate that is a true osmoconformer, which means that they are conforming to the, uh, the water that they live in. Here's a good look at a hagfish with the slime glands along the side. They produce a tremendous amount of slime, again, either in stress or... If you can get a video of this, um, this is the ejection of those uh, slime. Again, it can be used for predation. Um, the medic medicinal application of it is it comes out very, very quickly, and it's pretty fibrous, and it's pretty dense, and you might be able to use it for uh, wound compression. Uh, so it's a 
pretty neat. Again, if you can find a video of it, it's pretty awesome. These scavengers are also very important. Um, A uh, ha uh, hagfish will resemble uh, the lamprey, which is the next organism that we're going to look at, and the Petromyzontida. Um, but they are scavengers, uh, not predators like we're going to see with the lampreys. And the other thing is they've got these barbs and the slime glands. So it's all um, compare and contrast here. So here is the second... Uh, of that sister taxa that we'll look at in our first separation of the craniates and this is class Petromyzontida. Um, they used to be in the Cephalospidomorphi but now they're in the Petromyzontida. There's that mouth, again, pretty complex structure. They attach and they suck. They have an anticoagulant. Uh, this one does. Again, sometimes they uh, this was straight out of science fiction, right? It's a good video. You can click out on that. 